Hello and welcome to a new episode of 3 Minutes to Get It. This week, I thought we can speak about the swap. The main objective of our operating system is to execute processes. Each process needs a bit or a lot of memory in the RAM to be able to run. It's in this space is going to put its own data and also the CPU instruction is going to execute. This memory is not infinite and it's even shared with other users. For instance, when we write something on a hard drive, what we want to write is first copied in the RAM, in the memory, because the hard drive is very slow compared to the RAM. And this data stays in the RAM in case we need to read it later. We also have the core system, the kernel, that needs some space in the RAM. Now, when we take a look at the processes, you know, those programs we execute, we can see that, that some of them didn't have any activity in the CPU for some time, for some time. They use some RAM, but they have no activity, at least for now. Imagine, for example, a small computer where we put a web server. If no one types the address of this server in his browser, the web server, this process, just has to wait uh, for communication to come. That's it, it just waits. In a standard system, we have a few, sometimes even dozens of processes in this situation. The underlying idea is that if we need to quickly use some memory for a process, for any, uh, uh, for any activity, since those programs are just waiting, maybe we can copy the memory they use somewhere on the hard drive so we can free some memory in the RAM for this important use. But if this program is just, we just copied, if the program we just copied on the hard drive, if it needs to run, we can't run it uh, like that. We have to copy back the memory from the hard drive into the RAM to make it run. A process cannot use its memory if it's not in the RAM. Well, what we call the swap is this space on the hard drive where we can copy RAM apart. The main objective is to have more RAM for our other uses, for the buffers when we write things on the hard drive, for the kernel, even uh, for uh, when we read data on the hard drive. This swap space can be created in files or on dedicated partitions. It depends on the OS and on the choice of the administrator. With that in mind, it's not surprising to see some time to time data written in the swap. The kernel can take the decision to put data in the swap just in case. If it needs a big chunk of RAM at any time, it will have the possibility to use it since a lot of the used RAM is in the swap space. We also have to know that on modern operating systems, the kernel can allocate more RAM to processes than the physical RAM in the hardware. It's like the overbooking we can have in plain companies. There is indeed a very small chance that all those processes will use their memory all at once. And it works pretty well. But sometimes those processes are using all the memory. And there isn't enough physical memory to support that. So what to do? In this case, the system will use the swap as a complementary space for the RAM and not as a tool to better use the available RAM. We'll have to put a process on the swap so another one can run in the RAM. But immediately after, we will have to put another one in the swap so the first one can be put back into the RAM. We are going back and forth between those two states. We are not at all in the just-in-case situation. When we are in this state, we have a very slow computer because we are constantly using the hard drive to put and get data from the RAM and to the RAM. It's not necessarily an issue, especially if it's for a short period of time, but it can be an issue if it lasts. Another important point is that the amount of swap currently in use in the system is not really relevant. It can be some RAM that the kernel choose to put in swap just in case. A more relevant uh, indicator is the exchanges we have between the RAM and the swap. We can see those exchanges with the 
SI and SO colons of the VMstat command, for example. So that's it for this explanation on, on what the swap is. I hope uh, you, you understood some new things. I hope I've been clear. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comment below. Uh, if you're new here and you liked this video, uh, you can put a thumb up, you can subscribe, hit the bell button, and uh, you will be informed for my next video. Uh, I put a new video online each week on Thursday. So for me, I say to you, uh, bye, see you next time, next week for another video. Ciao.